Okay, so here comes the shed itself. A telehandler to deliver it in. It is an older shed. Um, so it took a little bit of work dismantling it. But yeah, we'll see how we get on now. Right, brilliant. We've got the shed base in place now. Ended up getting the forks to lift it over the hedge just there. Slide it in place and it's all level, so we're happy. So the plan now is to take one of the end panels, pop it in place, and then use these bits of timber to create uh, struts, which are going to hold it upright and ready to put one of the end panels on. So we've now got the long end up and bracing it in position with these bits of wood and then we've just roughly leveled it vertical so now we're going to get the end panel and pop that into place now okay so now we've got the end panel in and we've just braced it just along here and it's relatively sturdy at the moment but the top tip from the voice of experience is yeah you don't need to hit all the nails in because when you do need to test and adjust, because it's not quite bang on level yet, you don't obviously want to have to take all the nails or screws out again. So just enough to hold it in place and then braced. It's still braced around the back, that rear strut. Um, and now we're going to put on the side panel, another lengthways. Um, the reason for that, rather than putting on the door panel first, is because the door's a little bit flimsy at the moment because it's not being supported. So we're going to put another lengthways panel on here and crack on. It is starting to resemble a shed. So we've put on this longer panel. What we noticed though was that at the back corner, I was worried it was my leveling that was off, but actually that back plank has seems to have bowed down, which could have potentially pushed out getting all the corners uh, flush together. But it's actually fitted together fine. So what we'll probably end up doing is packing that out at the bottom. But again, that'll be another video sort of in terms of reconditioning the shed, getting it back up to scratch. So now the hardest bit, we've got the last panel to put in, which has got the door on, which is quite flimsy. So we'll just see how we get on. And I'll fill you in once we're done. We've got four sides up. Now, this was really good to demonstrate the importance of preparation and getting that level base sorted because it made leveling up and triangulating the, the sides an awful lot easier. So it's basically just held in place at the moment with a couple of nails um, on each side and, and a couple of screws as well, just so it's loosely held together. And then I need to now go around um, and get plenty of screws in. I've been advised to use screws rather than nails because screws will grip, they'll pull um, like the, the corners in tighter together and also they're less likely to slip. Um, so yeah. Next thing to do is put the, the roof beam which goes lengthways right the way across and attaches in there and then we can start thinking about a roof. Right then, we put the main cross beam in and all this is attached in with is just four long screws that go all the way through and then this just sits on top but it has been nailed straight down at an angle into there right the way across onto the other side and now we've got our first sheet of tin managed to source this for free off a very generous gentleman um, but I'm gonna have to cut it to length so I'm gonna put it in place first just in case the shed isn't completely square and they all end up as a wonk, then at least I can cut a straight line um, to account for those zigzagging. So got a platform ladder, very handy bit of kit. I've got a step and then I've got another uh, ladder on the long side just out there, just in case you need it. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so we've got all the sheets in place now and you'll notice they uh, overlap by one sort of rung. And then what we've done initially um, is just got the sheets fitted in place loosely using a type of nail called a spring head. Which I will show you now. 
So these are designed for use with uh, tin roofs. So they've got this almost like an umbrella. So the nail will go in, they'll fix the roof onto the timber below, and then this umbrella helps stop the, the rain going in. So we've got about six nails, I guess, on each sheet, and then I'm just going to reinforce it. So once I'm up there, I'll show you how to do that. Right, so up on the roof now, just use our ladder to dash up. Now you just got to be a bit mindful when you're up there. Obviously you've got the uh, roof beam that goes down the middle and then the support of the walls. But I guess, yeah, just trying to spread your weight. Uh, you can use crawler boards as well, um, but this tin's pretty solid. I'll be moving around here um, for a good hour or so and it's fine. Um, the actual nails then themselves, these spring head ones, is how they fit in. And you want to put them on the uh, top of the peak of one of these uh, sort of runs um, and that way the water is less likely to collect in there and seep through. Uh, for the holes that are already existing um, where it's been used before um, you can use uh, silicon sealant um, or sort of bitumen paint um, which is what you see uh, sort of painted onto sort of um, wood to preserve it and waterproof it. So I'm going to be using silicon uh, later to seal these holes. Um, so yeah, in terms of the actual nails themselves um, like I say just hold it in place it does take a bit of a, a few hits um, to actually fix it in into um, to get it through the tin and then into the timber below but just persevere and it will go through eventually and you'll feel it so in terms of these fixing uh, these uh, spring head nails in place um, basically to get the put the sheet on overlapping and then put uh, a spring head in one corner where it overlaps and the spring head nail in the other corner then down the centre roof beam and then the same in the other corners and now every third uh, peak I'm going to put another spring head just to keep the space nice and even right the way along and then that will keep the, the uh, tin roof nice and secure. Hi, thank you for watching part two of putting up a shed. Uh, in the next part, we're going to be reconditioning the shed, getting it watertight, uh, lining the inside, putting the floor down and basically sprucing it up. So I look forward to seeing you in that video.